Hello and welcome to this video on how to measure gas volumes from the C5 series on quantitative analysis. My name is Mr. Clee. Alright, hopefully by the end of this video you should be able to give three different methods for measuring the amount of gas produced in a reaction and give the advantages and disadvantages of both. Hopefully you should also be able to talk about um, the, the shape of the graph that you get in a reaction that produced the gas including the role of limiting factors and to use the molar volume of a gas at room temperature and pressure to calculate the amount of gas in moles that you've produced in a reaction. Firstly, this is the gas syringe method um, of measuring a gas. It's pretty much the best one. Um, it directly measures the amount in the volume of the gas in cubic centimetres that's produced. The two major problems and flaws that you get is that the sometimes it's difficult to get the bung into the flask without gas escaping. You also need to make sure that the gas syringe is tight, airtight, so nothing escapes. Small gases might, like hydrogen might possibly escape and it's also limited to 100 cubic centimetres in terms of the amount that you can measure. Second method is the upward displacement over water sometimes called the downward displacement of water. Essentially what happens here is that the gas goes down a delivery tube and is bubbled into a column of water. The gas then collects at the top of that column, pushing the water down out of the way. Problems with this method, the main problem is that some gases are quite soluble in water and if the gas is soluble in water then what will happen is that not all the gas will be produced in the bubble because a lot of it will have dissolved in the water rather than uh, be collected. The third and final method for measuring the amount of gas produced in a reaction is using the change in mass. Gases, like all substances, have mass, and you can measure the amount of gas produced by measuring the change in mass using the top hand balance. As the gas escapes, the mass of the container will reduce. This is an issue um, for very, very light gases, something like hydrogen, which is really, really light. You need a very large volume of gas to be produced before you get a measurable change in the mass. It's most useful for things like carbon dioxide and heavier gases. Here's the example here. Uh, comparing the molar masses of carbon dioxide and hydrogen, hydrogen is really light. It's only 2 grams per mole. Because of that, um, 100 cubic centimetres of hydrogen at room temperature and pressure would only have a mass of 0 0.008 grams, which is really, really light. Carbon dioxide, which is a heavier gas, that would have a mass of 0 0.18 gram, which is, although being a very small amount, is a measurable amount, and you could measure that on a top pan balance. Right, this graph shows a classic rate of reaction. This is between magnesium and hydrochloric acid producing hydrogen gas. You can see the shape of the reaction it is at its fastest for slowing down and stopping. Steepest part of the graph is the fastest and when it's slowed down to stopped um, that's because one of the reactants has run out. Whichever reactant has run out is said to be the limiting reactant. The one that's left over and that there is more of left in the tube is described as being in excess. So you need to be able to interpret these graphs. First question how long did it take to produce 60 cubic centimetres of hydrogen? It's just a straightforward taking information off a graph. It's somewhere between 75 and 80. How much hydrogen was produced after 60 seconds? You can see that's already marked out for you. It's 50 cubic centimetres. And how much was produced 120 seconds after the start? Yep. It's somewhere in the region of 75. You can also tell from this reaction when it stopped and we say it stopped when it's horizontal which in this case is at 180 seconds. So the reaction stops when one of the reactants has been used up. The two key terms that you need to know are the limiting factor and in excess. The limiting factor is the one that limits the rate of reaction, the one that is used up. You can't tell from this graph which one is the limiting factor. You can only tell that one of them has run out. And which one is in excess is the one that's left over. A way that you could tell was if you added more, um, more magnesium and the reaction continued, then you'd know that the magnesium was a limiting factor. If you added more magnesium and it, and it had stopped still, then uh, you would be able to tell 
that it was the magnesium that in that case was the, uh, the hydrochloric acid that there was the limiting factor. You could tell visually by looking at the tube which one because if the reaction stopped and there's still magnesium left visible then the hydrochloric acid is the limiting factor. Right, really importantly, one mole of any gas at room temperature and pressure takes up 24 litres. So one mole of carbon dioxide occupies 24 litres, so does one mole of, of hydrogen, so does one mole of oxygen, so does one mole of any gas whatsoever. You can use that information to calculate the number of moles of gas that you've got. So you take the volume of the gas that you've collected at room temperature and pressure and divide it by the molar volume, i.e. 24. So if you've got 1.2 litres, if you divide that, by 24, it will tell you the number of moles of carbon dioxide that you've got in this situation, which in this case is 0 0.05, rubbish pen, 0 0.05 moles of, of carbon dioxide gas in this reaction. Um, the one thing to be careful of, as always, you make sure that you've got your units correct. DM3, CM3. Make sure that you've converted them correctly. A few examples. First one, 48 litres of oxygen divided by 24, which gives you 2 moles of oxygen. 6 litres of carbon dioxide divided by 24 gives you 0.25 moles of carbon dioxide and then the one that you need to be careful of 120 cubic centimeters so firstly you've got to convert that into liters which is 0 0.12 divide that by 24 which gives you the number of moles that you've got of hydrogen gas which is 0 0.0, 0, 0 stupid pen, 5 moles of hydrogen gas produced in this reaction. So finally, in summary, we can measure the rate of gas production in a reaction using three different methods, the upward displacement over water, we can use a gas syringe, and we can measure the mass lost. Displacement over water is unsuitable for soluble gases, like measuring carbon dioxide and measuring the mass change is unsuitable for light gases. Um, increasing the concentration of gas increases the steepness of a line on, on the graph, showing a faster rate of reaction. Doubling the amount of a limiting factor will double the amount of product. And one mole of any gas has a volume of 24 dm3 at room temperature and pressure. So to work out the moles, you do the volume of gas divided by 24, and that gives you the number of moles of any gas. Thanks very much for watching. My name is Mr. Clee. If you've got any questions on this video or any others in the series, please see me or any of your science teachers.